Okay, so one, two, three. I'm going to read the first part to you. Please follow along. I'm reading the first paragraph. So read along. If you want to have the best chances of getting a red marble from a gun gumball machine, is it better if the machine is full of gumballs or half empty? How do the chances of getting an ace in a deck of playing cards change if you have three or four deck of cards to choose from instead of only one deck? In this lesson, you will think about the size of the sample space, the collection of all possible outcomes of an event. Think about these questions as you were today. How has the whole or total changed? Has the portion or part we are interested in changed? Has the event became become more or less likely. Now, I want a red gumball machine. So if, is it better for me to try to get a red gumball machine illustrated here by my artistic ability in a full gumball machine or is it better for me to go into the half empty gumball machine? Where is it better? How many of you say full? How many of you say empty? I mean half empty? No. How many of you say something else? Do you, Chris? No. Yes? No. Yes? No. All right. So, what we're going to do is we're going to be working on 1-75, okay? And hopefully by the end of the period, you will determine if it's better to go into the full gumball machine or the half gumball machine. Okay. Your team will be given a bag containing a set of colored mar blocks or counters. Each team will receive a bag that is identical to yours. Look at the blocks in your bag. If you were to reach into the bag and select one block without looking, what is the likelihood that it will be red, green, blue, and orange? All right, so I'm going to ask you to determine the probability of red, the probability of green, the probability of blue, and the probability of orange, because that's what it says. Now, how do I write probability? What's the first step in writing pro probability? What does it look like? A fraction. A fraction. So I'm going to set up fractions for these problems. Okay. Now, let me show you what it is. Because I'm not going to hand you the bag. Uh, if I go here, this is our bag. This is our bag, and it says right there, this bag contains one yellow, two red, four green, and five, blo and five blue blocks. Now, we, we're not clicking on it. We're not selecting. Right now, what we're doing is we're doing a theoretical probability, which means you're doing the math. You're not actually clicking on the bag. But this is the information that you need. And feel free, if you want to have this on your iPad, you may. Feel free to... Click on it so you see the back, but you don't have to click on the back. Uh, write down the fraction. So using this information, write down the fraction, go. So fill this out using this. Go. There's the information. How many are red? Okay. Raise your hand if you can tell me what would be the fraction of red. 
Sebastian? Two out of 12. Very good. Green? Yes. Blue? Yes. Very good. Orange? No. Brandon? Zero twelve. There was no orange. It was there to confuse you. Yes, I know that the one that's missing is yellow. yellow. But they did that on purpose because they know kids are just going to do the math, do the math. Oh, what's one? One's left. Let's make it yellow. Careful. All right. Do your answers represent theoretical or experimental? Theoretical. Did you experiment with these? No. Like in science? No. So this is called theoretical. Probability. Because we just did the math. Did we actually select from the back? No. No. We just did the math on it. Okay. We're going to do 1 76. If you were to select one block from the bag 12 times, replacing the block you drew between each selection, how many of those times would you expect to have selected a blue block? So what's the probability of blue? By 12. Now, if I were to select 12 times. How many would be blue? Five. Five. Because it's five out of 12. But what if I select 24 times? How many blues should I get? Ten. Didn't I just double this? So what would be this fraction? I'm going to write it over here. If you can write it on the other side, that would actually be better. What fraction would this be? 5, Five over 12. What fraction would this be? 10 over yeah, you're right. Um, you know, these, these fractions kind of confuse me. I'm going to turn them into percent. So 5 out of 12 is what percent? Good. Let's do for this one. What number do I type in first? 10 divided by? 24. Oh. All you do is double it, but did it change? No. No. Guess what? This 24 means the gumball machine is full. This 12? means that the gumball machine is half, half empty. Wait, so there's 24 gumballs inside? But what happens to my percent? They don't change. They don't change. So here, this probability, if it's full, would be 41.6%. But if it's half empty, what's the probability of me choosing a blue one? 41.6%. So does it matter if you... If does it matter if it's half full or, or completely full? No. 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 Your probability doesn't change. Yes. But doesn't it depend what kind of color it is? Like how much it is? Well, right now we're looking at in this gumball machine, we have 2 out of 12, 4 out of 12, and 5 out of 12, respectively, and 1 out of 1, right? Theoretically, theoretically, from here to here, each gumball, each color is chosen evenly, right? Proportionately. Now, does that really happen? No, but theoretically, that's what it happens. Okay, so that's a good place to stop for today. I'm not done. 